In the previous video, we saw how to build the LED display. And in this video, we will be adding ESP8266 and make this display show some real time data. This is going to be a complete beginner guide to ESP8266. So don't worry if you haven't used it before. But I assume you are good with the coding part because the programming part of this video will be in a faster pace. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let's look into ESP8266-01, a microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi support. This was released back in 2014, but even today it's a great device for the hobbyist. ESP8266 has many variants and other siblings who have more pins and more memory than this. In this video, we will just focus on using this version of the ESP. This has 8 pins, VCC, Ground, RX, TX, Chip Power, Reset, GPIO0, GPIO2. Setting up this microcontroller for programming might be difficult for some who haven't used an ESP before. So let's make it simple. You're going to need an FDTM module to make serial communication to your PC. The most important thing is to remember to set the FDTM module to 3.3V or use resistor and build a voltage divider circuit to the RX pin of the ESP. And finally connect the chip power to VCC. For a more detailed connection, you can check the link in the description. Now comes the complicated part. By default, the ESP comes with 80 commands, just like the HC05 Bluetooth module. It has two modes, one for uploading the code and other for running the code. We can think of flashing a phone as a near perfect analogy for this kind of behavior. When the GPIO pin 0 is pulled down, it enters the flash mode just like going to recovery in your smartphone while holding the power and the volume button. This allows us to upload the code to the ESP. Now we will set up the Arduino IDE. Copy this link from the description and add this to the preference. Then go to the board, manage both and search for ESP8266 and install the latest version. This sets up the ESP core for Arduino IDE. With this, let's start the blink sketch. It's exactly the same code you write for your Arduino except for the fact that it has a built-in LED in pin 1 and in Arduino it's pin 13. Now the setup is complete, just upload the code. The code isn't working? Not really, it's just we are still in flash mode. To run the code, all we have to do is remove the GPIO pin 0 from the ground and disconnect the power to the board and power it again or just reset using the reset pin by pulling it to the ground. Finally, it's working. But doing this multiple times when you are building a prototype might be tedious. So to make it simpler, you can either buy an ESP8266 programmer board or you can build one on your own just like I did. This is fairly a basic circuit. So the circuit will be given in the description which you can replicate. Now it's a lot easier to use. Just hold the program button and power it on. Which will put the ESP in flashing mode and using the reset button you can put the ESP on executing mode. Now you can easily program and reprogram the ESP with less difficulty. As we went through the basics of ESP8266-01, it's time to integrate it with the Arduino and show some real time data on the display. We are going to do serial communication between the ESP and the Arduino. Let's first see the circuit. Connect Arduino RX to ESP TX, Arduino TX to ESP RX using a voltage divider circuit of 1.2K and 2.2K resistor. This makes ESP receive data with 3.3V logic. This setup should be more than enough to make the circuit work. We have two circuits with two different voltage levels. So we will be using two voltage regulators. One 7805 voltage regulator for 5V and a 3.3V regulator. First, let's install the 3.3V regulator and connect the VCC and ground of ESP to 3.3V regulator. Now connect the 5V regulator and connect the circuit to the Arduino. And finally, add a power port for power supply. And finish the remaining circuit from the schematic. Make sure your supply voltage is below 12V. More than 12V can kill the 3.3V regulator. As the circuit is complete, now it's time to code the ESP and the Arduino. Let's start with the Arduino. Since we have completed most of it in the previous video, it's just going to be a few lines of code. Just check if any data is sent in the serial port of the Arduino and if yes, we'll read the data and store it in a variable. 
Finally, we'll merge the data we receive into a 2D array using the merge function. If you're not understanding the code, go back and check out the previous video or go through the code in the GitHub. For now, this is all that we have to code in Arduino. Let's see the code for ESP8266. First, import the important library, ESP8266 Wi-Fi.h for using the Wi-Fi feature in this ESP. ESP8266 HTTP Client.h This is for communicating with HTTP links. And finally, Arduino JSON.h We are using this library because most of the APIs out there returns a JSON file. So for extracting information from this JSON file, we will use the Arduino JSON library. Create two constants for your Wi-Fi SSID and password and a payload variable to store the JSON data written by the API. In the setup function, set the baud rate the same as the value set in the Arduino or this will end up being a mess in the end. Let's start the Wi-Fi and check whether it's connected. If it fails, the program falls in an infinite loop. If it's connected, we will use the HTTP client to access the API URL which we will see how to set up in the later part of the video. Once we have set up this, we will see how to pass the package. You can do this manually but I will be using the Arduino JSON assistant to do that. First copy the JSON format you have and paste it in the Arduino JSON assistant. You should see that the assistant spits the code that we need. First copy the size of the JSON and paste it in the code. Then use the deserialize JSON function to get the data from the API and store it in a dynamic JSON document. Now we can go through the key value pair and find the data you need to display. In our case, it's the time. The matching key for this is formatted. Extract the string using this key and the document object. Then using some string manipulation, we'll get the time. If the data is not changed, we won't send that to the Arduino or we will send the modified data to the Arduino if the data is changed. Once that is done, we can end the connection and repeat this whole process again after 15 seconds. Now let's see how to set up the API and the response JSON we need. For this particular API I am using, go to timezonedb.com and register for the API for free. Once register, log into your account, you will see your API key in the account overview. Just copy this and paste it in the ESP code. Now let's see how to set up the time zone where you stay. Go to the API tab and select get time zone and then click on list of time zone and find the responses for the zone name and click on the time zone. In this, find the time zone of your place where you live. Finally, copy paste the place you need and that's it, you are done with ESP8266. Once the code is done, it's time to upload the code. Compile and upload the code in Arduino as well as in the ESP. Make sure ESP and Arduino is not connected when they are uploading. Since they both do serial communication, with the same pin as they used to communicate with your PC. So, program them individually and place them back. Once the connections are verified and the code is uploaded, power on the circuit. First, you should just see two columns moving around the screen. This indicates that the device is trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. Once it's connected, it should show the time. Overall, this was really a fun project to work on. This had complete package of electronics coding and some intense soldering. And you can also comment down any other project you like to see on this channel. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. You can also support this channel by sharing this content with someone who is interested and feel free to follow me on Instagram and check out my blog for the written version of these videos I make. So that's it for this video. You can watch the other interesting videos from the link on the screen. As always. See you guys later.